Keeping your Mac in great working condition is an age old problem. From minimizing clutter to maintaining the battery and keeping the keyboard and display in good condition, everyone has a different approach to get the absolute most of your Mac. But today we're going to distill down the best practices that you can follow to keep your Mac in optimal running condition for years to come. First up, let's make sure your MacBook is protected inside and out. The biggest myth that I want to dispel is that you should buy cases and accessories to keep your Mac clean and dent free. A lot of people use rubber keyboard covers to keep dust out and hard shell cases to avoid scratches. But here's the thing, these can actually cause more harm than good. For one, the tolerances of a MacBook are very slim, so putting a rubber keyboard protector can put too much pressure on the display and even lead to cracked screens. Similarly, while hard shell cases can protect against the occasional scratch, they often don't provide very much protection because they don't absorb energy. On top of not being very protective, hard cases can trap debris and actually scratch the surface of your MacBook. So these hard shell cases can actually do the exact opposite of what they're designed to do. But more than that, they interfere with the design of your MacBook. The aluminum body is designed to dissipate heat and covering the bottom with a thick, non-breathable plastic shell can trap heat and cause your Mac to run worse. In this side-by-side -side comparison, you can see the MacBook running with and without a case, and the score of this machine without a case is noticeably higher than with one installed. So let's ditch that rubber keyboard protector and instead we'll go for a thin bristle brush or even a paintbrush to clean dust out of the keys. It's gentler on the keyboard mechanism and it doesn't damage your display. And we're also gonna ditch this hard plastic case in favor of a laptop sleeve. They won't interfere with the heat dissipation properties of your MacBook and let's be honest, it's gonna hold up a lot better in a fall with this padded sleeve than with that hard shell case. Next up, Let's talk cleaning. We all hate how smudgy and gross our displays get after a little while, but cleaning them can be tricky and we don't wanna scratch the surface. Fortunately, I've got a tried and true method that's dead easy. First, you'll need a microfiber cloth and some lens cleaner. Not window cleaner, use something made specifically for lenses and screens. Then we'll fold the microfiber towel and spray cleaner onto it generously. Now wipe the display. You should see damp streaks as the lens cleaner breaks down the oils and debris on the surface. Next, we'll turn the microfiber cloth over to the dry side and use a light pressure to dry and polish the display, removing the remaining oils and cleaner. So that's how you can get your screen sparkling in no time at all. And the real key there is using the dry side of the microfiber cloth. If you leave the wet streaks on the display, you'll still be able to see them when the cleaner has dried. And by the way, this same method applies for the body of your MacBook as well. A damp microfiber cloth with gentle swirling motions will get all the smudges and dirt out in no time. So protecting and cleaning your Mac are two great ways to keep it running well for a long time. But at the end of the day, we're shooting for years of productive life here. And the latest Macs are so powerful, they have the potential to last far longer than most people keep them for. But to tap into that lifespan, you'll want to maintain the internals as well as the externals. But there are a lot of myths and confusions surrounding the best way to go about doing this. So let's tackle them one at a time. First, are you worried about your SSD wearing out? Well, don't be. There's a common myth out there that Apple Silicon Macs with eight gigabytes of RAM can wear out faster. This is because Apple Silicon Macs can tap into the SSD to act as virtual RAM if the system needs more space thus putting additional load on the SSD. Fortunately, this isn't really something you need to worry about as new Mac SSDs are built to last. Last year, I took a look at an M2 Mac mini that was used for testing purposes, and it had over 10 petabytes of data written to its SSD, and it was still operating completely normal. So don't worry about your SSD wearing out. The far more likely culprit is the battery. A worn out battery can be super frustrating. It drains faster, which means you have to charge it more, applying more cycles every day and accelerating the process. But again, there are some misconceptions that we should clear up. One myth, that you shouldn't leave your Mac plugged in all the time. Modern Macs will switch to direct power from the power adapter when the battery fills up. 
so it won't be sitting around trying to charge all the time. What does help? Well, if you want to extend the lifespan of your Mac's battery, you should optimize how you charge. For example, the 16-inch MacBook Pro comes with a massive 140-watt charger that can fill the battery up in under an hour. But if you don't need the speed, consider using a slower 30-watt charger to drip feed your battery. This will keep temperatures lower and could extend the life of the battery overall. And if you need to store your battery for a long time, let's say you're going out of town, the best practice would be to charge your battery only to 50%. This is actually what Apple officially recommends. So for long-term storage, half full is the way to go. So my three battery tips, plugged in is fine by me. Slow chargers are better for the battery over time and store long-term charged at 50%. Next up, let's talk speed. How do you keep your Mac running at its absolute fastest? I know a lot of people, after a couple of years, start to get frustrated because their Mac feels slow. Oftentimes, that's not the computer slowing down, but your drive getting gunked up over time. Fortunately, modern operating systems are pretty good at regulating themselves, but as with any laptop, clutter can be a major frustration. Leaving a ton of apps open all the time, running with a full SSD, or leaving a laptop powered on and skipping software updates can all lead to it feeling bogged down. I would recommend at least once a week, close all open applications and restart your computer. Similarly, try to install updates when you can as well. Sometimes a little OS refresh could be just what you need. And particularly on Macs with smaller 128 or 256 gigabyte SSDs, keeping free space is essential. You don't wanna be sitting there constantly with one gigabyte of data remaining on your drive. And this is where I use Clean My Mac to easily identify junk and duplicate files, or even just to show me in detail where my storage is being taken up so I can determine what I do and don't need. This helps with day-to-day -day maintenance, but probably my favorite feature of Clean My Mac is that it can take care of those pesky macOS system files. My 15-inch MacBook Air, for example, has half of its storage taken up by these system files. But Clean My Mac can easily remove these files, and in just a few seconds, I've gained back 100 gigabytes on this system. And that's honestly the hard truth about maintaining a modern Mac. A lot of people think that when a computer starts to feel slow, their processor or their RAM is letting them down. But nine times out of 10 these days, it's just your storage. So the key takeaway here, restart your computer weekly, keep your SSD clean, and use Clean My Mac for a really deep cleanup. Now with all of these tips put together, you can certainly keep your Mac running in tip-top shape for years to come. I hope you found all the resources in this video helpful and informative. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one.